that's going to be able to do with it and not about Tesla. I don't know. I mean, people do talk about it online. Um, I think I think Tesla will have sort of a chat GPT moment. Maybe the, if, if not this year, I'd say no later than next year. Um, Wait, say that again. I'm sorry. You're, you're going to have a sort, of, a sort of chat GPT moment. Oh, you will in terms of suddenly it will. Yeah, suddenly three million cars will be able to drive themselves right. with no one. Right. It goes back to that. Right. Yeah. And then five million cars and then 10 million cars. So um, the. the and, 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 and I, would, I would also say that um, if, if positions were reversed um, and say, um, well, in fact, the positions are, are reversed. For, for example, G Google has Waymo, which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, sort of attempting self-driving. And they are able to make self-driving work in a very limited uh, geography with, with very tightly mapped streets. But as soon as, any, as, soon as there's anything goes r wrong with those streets, like there's an accident or a parade um, or road construction, uh, it's, right. It stops working. It, basically, uh, uh, Google is unable to, to to produce a generalized solution to self-driving that works anywhere. They've been trying to do that for a long time. They have been unsuccessful. Tesla, Tesla, basically has that and 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 is is, is far more advanced th th than Google. Yeah. And so, if the positions were reversed and you said, okay, um, uh, Tesla's got to produce a, a large language model that has output uh, equal to or greater than uh, ChatGPT. Uh, or Microsoft OpenAI has to do self-driving, and we, we just we, fl we flip the tasks. Tesla would win. You'd win. Yes. And you have the computing power and everything else you yeah. need to do it. Absolutely. Um, I'm being told we don't have that much time. Do you, can you give me another five minutes? Or <laughs> yeah, what do you think? yeah, I you think can. so. The, 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 I do have a board meeting. I know. But, uh, I, I, but if I, five minutes is probably fine. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, OpenAI, I mean, you seem somewhat frustrated with them. You were one of the big contributors early on. The, the reason, I, I am the reason OpenAI exists. Um, How much money did you give them? Um, so, uh, I, I, I'm not sure the exact number, but it's some, some number on, on the order of $50 million. Uh, so, so, the, the <laughs> man, fate loves irony, next level. Um, so, I used to be close friends with Larry Page, and I would stay at his house, and we'd have these conversations long into, long into the evening um, about AI, and I, I, would, I would be constantly urging him to be careful about the danger of, of AI, and, um, and, and, and he, he, just, he was really not concerned about the danger of AI and was quite cavalier about it. Um, and um, and, and, and at, at the time, uh, Google, especially after their acquisition of DeepMind, had three quarters of the world's AI talent. They had obviously a lot of computers and a lot of money. Um, so it was a unipolar world for, for AI. And, and we've got a unipolar world, but, but the, the person who, who controls that does not, or at least did, did not seem to be concerned about AI safety. That, that, sound, that sounded like a real problem. So, um, and, and then the final straw was uh, Larry calling me a speciest. Uh, for being um, pro-human consciousness <laughs> instead of machine consciousness. And I'm like, well, yes, I guess I am. I, I am a species. And, 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 uh, so, and, right, and, so you <laughs> helped to the creation of OpenAI. You put yeah, in as so much as $50 million. More than helped. It wouldn't exist without it me. It wouldn't exist without you. So um, I came up with a name. Right. Uh, the name uh, OpenAI refers to open source. Um, so, so the intent was, what's the, op okay, so what was the opposite, what's the opposite of, um, of Google would, would be a, an open source nonprofit because Google is closed sourced for profit. Um, and that profit motivation can be potentially dangerous. Um, so. Uh, Should you have gotten governance for that money? Should you have gotten some level of control, perhaps, in retrospect? Yeah, I, I, I fully admit to being a huge idiot here. Um, so. Um, Anyway, so, so OpenAI was like meant to be open, AI, open as an open source. Uh, it was created as a 501c3. Um, and, um, but, but I, so, so part of it is also in the beginning, I thought, look, this is, this is probably a hopeless endeavor. How could we possibly compete with, uh, how, how could OpenAI possibly compete with, with Google DeepMind? I mean, this, this seemed like an ant against an elephant, you know, which is not, not, not a contest. Um, and, um, and I was also, uh, the, the, I mean, I, 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 
was instrumental in, in recruiting the, 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 the key uh, scientists and en engineers, most specifically, most notably uh, Ilya Sotskaya. Um, in fact, um, uh, Ilya went back and forth several times because he, he would say he's going to join OpenAI, then Demis would convince him not to, then I, I would convince him to do so. And then and this went back and forth several times, and ultimately he decided to join OpenAI. And, and really, uh, uh, Ilya joining was the was was the linchpin for right. uh, OpenAI being ultimately successful. So you're very disappointed in what's happened there in terms of it becoming a for-profit. I, I, I would any say action? I, I, sue I would them say, in some way? I, I, I do think that there's some... I, I, look, it does seem weird that something can be um, a non-profit uh, open source and somehow transform itself into a for-profit closed source. Um, I mean, this would be like, like, let's say you funded an organization to save the Amazon rainforest, and instead they became a, a lumber company <laughs> and chopped down the forest and sold it for money. And you'd be therefore like, well, oh, wait a second, that's uh, the exact opposite of what I gave the money for. Yeah. Uh, is that legal? That doesn't seem legal. Uh, and if it is, and, and in general, if it is legal to uh, start a, a company as a nonprofit and then take the IP and transfer it to a for profit that then makes tons of money, um, shouldn't everyone start? Shouldn't that be the default? Right. Um, and, and, and then I also think it's important to understand the, the like, like when push comes to shove, let's say they do create some, some digital super intelligence, almost godlike intelligence. Well, who's in control? Yeah. And, and what ex exactly is the relationship between OpenAI and Microsoft? Um, and I do worry that uh, Microsoft actually may be more in control than, say, the leadership team at OpenAI realizes. Um, I mean, Microsoft, ha as part of the Microsoft investment, they have uh, rights to all of the software, all of the model weights, and everything necessary to run the inference system. So they essentially have a great deal of control. At any point, Microsoft could cut off OpenAI. Um, Elon, I'm being told we have to wrap up. Your board has been very um, <laughs> sure. patient. I, I want to end on one AI question. You have a lot of kids. I have some kids. I have one who's actually um, soon to go into the workforce. I struggle with how to advise him about a career when this technology exists and will only improve. I'm just curious, when you think about advising your children on a career with so much that is changing, what do you tell them is going to be a value? Well, that is a tough question to answer. Um, I guess um, I would just say, you know, to, to sort of follow their heart in terms of what they, they find um, interesting to do or fulfilling to do. Um, and, um, you know, try to be as useful as possible to the rest of society. Um, you know, if, if we do get to the sort of like magic genie situation where um, you can ask the AI for, for anything, um, and, and let's say it's even the benign scenario, let, let's say it's a benign scenario, how do we actually find fulfillment? You know, it's uh, how do we find meaning in life if uh, the AI could do your job better than you can? Um, I mean, if I think about it too hard, it, frankly, it can be uh, just dis dispiriting and uh, demotivating. Um, because, I mean, I, I go through, I, I mean, I, I, I've put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into building the companies, and then, it, and then I'm like, wait, well, sh should I be doing this? Because if I'm sacrificing time with friends and family that I would prefer to, to, to do, but, but then ultimately the AI can do all these things? Does that make sense? I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> to some extent, I have to have deliberate suspension of disbelief in order to, be, to remain motivated. Um, so I, I guess I would say just, you know, work on things that you find interesting, fulfilling, and, um, and, and that contribute uh, some good to the rest of society. Okay. Well, that's a great place to end. There's so much we didn't get to. I hope you'll give me another chance to sit down with you. But Elon, thank you for being so generous with your time. 